Well, a vote for me is a vote that uh, your voice is going to be heard. And if possible, your voice and your concerns are going to be reacted upon, you know, to create a group, a study, or something that is needed to promote your community, the part of the community that you're, you live in or are involved in, where you have your concerns and everything that is uh, essential to your lifestyle. Uh, so vote for me is your voice is going to be heard. Your voice will be, you know, directed to the right person and the right thing at the right time and hopefully have the people who have the, the abilities, the moral, you know, the morality and, and everything that is going to try to give you the best service they can for the buck. And, you know, I'm looking at, you know, it's your job. Do, do the work and perform it like you own it. You know, do, do your best. And, and um, that's what I'm looking for as, you know, as a community. Do your best no matter who you are, where you are, and what you're doing. Do the best for you know, your community and the people involved. Do you believe increasing access to affordable housing for families making less than $40,000 a year should be part of the city's approach to economic development? We, we do have an affordable housing problem in this town that uh, incomes of less than 40000 It's hard to secure a property that's of any value within the city. Uh, a lot of properties that are in the price range that somebody can afford with an income of, of less than 40000 are usually ones that are presently rentals or properties that have been uh, abandoned and are derelict on the city records or city, you know, the city and county reports. So affordable housing is a definite need. JUMP is an organization that's trying to, you know, get things going and, and, and make it uh, more affordable for people to get good housing in the city of Topeka that uh, is affordable and is in a area that becomes desirable if it's not desirable at the moment, but at least can be built on and become desirable. How would you work to rebuild trust uh, between members of the public and members of law enforcement in our community? Uh, that's one subject that uh, I'm familiar with as far as the developing trust and everything with the TPD, fire department, and other bases of government. With, with the police, it seems to be somewhat of a stressful situation from COVID and everything that has led to a lot of things not being fully investigated, fully reported that uh, needs to be. So that leaves people not trusting when they get a report on something that happened on their property and it's not accurate and you have to go and, and get with the police department, try to look back and see why it wasn't accurate to uh, see, you know, response times in some parts of town, not as uh, rapid as in others as, you know, and to see just almost a attitude of sometimes that, you know, well, what can we do about it? When the, when the police show up and look at something, they say, well, what can we do about it? We can't do anything. And it becomes kind of uh, an issue of maybe the police, like I say, are overstressed uh, with our mental health and a lot of officers being ex-military and stuff, if there's some post-traumatic stress that's involved and things that cause reactions that, you know, needs to be looked at too to get, you know, make sure that we have a healthy physically, mentally, you know, stable group of officers that can be counted on is, is a prime thing. I, I, think, I think it's a lack of, like I say, being just, you know, getting, getting them de-stressed de because of COVID, getting them de-stressed because of all the public opinion from various other police departments all across the nation. I mean, it just, it leaves a black eye with, the, with somebody in the PD and stuff, and it's not a job I'd want right now. And it's one that the officers that are doing it are probably trying to do the best they can. And like I say, it's just maybe limited on the mental health and some of the other stuff that they're getting, their physical rest and time, you know, time away from the job. So to, to get policing and stuff and trust it again is just gonna take some effort, community efforts being done now as far as meetings that have occurred as of last night that uh, they were going out and, and, and letting the public know of what's being done as far as officers on arrests and pulling vehicles over and things like that. So it's just regaining some trust with all the publicity nationally. So 
I think that's more of the big problem. How do you plan on keeping young people in Topeka? How do you keep on, how do you plan on keeping people in general in Topeka? As, as mayor, you can't be the one to keep people in Topeka or anything else. That's all part of the council and and uh, the city managers and, and and what we have as far as our public resources and everything else. You know, the mayor can be the positive force to you know keep all the positives going strong and to get the things that are going bad, you know, improved or you know eliminated if we can. If there's you know, a problem that needs to be eliminated or a problem that needs to be worked on and things like that. that that's the only way you're going to get people to actually come, stay, and stuff like that. Our job market is great here as far as new businesses and uh, businesses that have sustained over the years. Uh, the, the youth of today are more mobile than from 30 years ago that uh, people are looking more and more away from home that, you know, family and things like that becomes more more or less a thing that, you know, we can still keep in touch and we can still be with you and we see a few times a year, but we don't have to be right in the same town, the same state or whatever. So that's a big problem there as far as keeping families together and keeping things oriented. And like I say, new jobs and things that are coming to town are attracting new people. Stimulation of, uh, you know, housing and stuff like that being more affordable here is a thing to keep you here. Uh, to uh, you know, attract youth, there's got to be something here maybe that is you know more stimulating too. Besides having an electronic device in your hand all the time and doing other activities, so it's it, it's a you know it's been an ongoing question for years here in Topeka. How do we keep our intelligent, strong, working people here, and how do we you know keep the the base of the the youth that are graduating from our schools and everything else? Then how do we keep them here and instead of educating them and then having them go elsewhere and make their incomes because I, I think the jobs and the economic conditions here are good for housing and things like that. There's just probably some organization of more youth groups, I, you know, the 20 under 30 groups and things like that that can help stimulate things. Those are good for us. And I'll go to Topeka and, and, and the Chamber of, you know, got ideas too as far as how to keep uh, youth more involved and, and stay in the community and stay in the area and, and contribute to the welfare of the, you know, this area. So. Topeka, and especially where my businesses are located, has a large population of homeless. As a city, we only have one place for those in need to get resources, and in order to get those resources, you must be free of all, all substances. What do you plan to do to help the people living on the street that are battling addiction and are not able to get help in our county? The property that I own and used to live in less than two years ago is located in a part of town where the homeless seem to be able to congregate and come into the neighborhood and, and, and be there. And I've had the privilege of having some of them talk to me and tell me the situations that are going on. And a lot of the homelessness is by choice because of the unavailability of medical health or medical the treatment that's affordable uh, medications and things like that, the mental health issues of some of the individuals to be able to be under treatment and afford it and to be able to you know get back into being a functioning uh, person again. The, the addictions and everything that some of them have are, are extreme and, and it's, hard, it's hard because it's an addiction is an addiction and it, and it becomes something that uh, to be treated has to have the proper mental health facilities, the proper, you know, doctors, the proper, you know, uh, social workers and everything else to keep track of the people. And with the latest in, you know, politics to eliminate mental health facilities, eliminate mental health as an issue that needs to be addressed, it is something that needs to be addressed and it's, it's not going to be easy, so it's going to take involvement of uh, the, the, the public seeing that mental health is an issue, that having facilities that can treat and properly care for these people. And the other thing is to be able to convince these people that the help is going to be there, that it's going to be there on a constant basis, and it's not going to disappear. The USDA defines food deserts in urban areas as census tracts where much of the population consists of low-income residents and most people live more than one mile from a grocery store. Under this definition, the USDA has determined that much of North downtown and East Topeka are food deserts. How will you work to ensure every Topekan of every income has access to nearby and convenient grocery stores? 
in discussing things with the, the neighborhood that I was in, Ward Mead neighborhood, and discussing things with them because that's one of the neighborhoods and in need of a full service grocery store that's, you know, less than a couple miles away. Uh, the one st grocery store that's remained in business on 6th Street is one that is limited as far as the inventory they got, the food that they have available, competing with the large uh, big box stores and uh, larger corporations, they can't have food. They don't get their food as cheaply and therefore can't retail it as cheaply as the larger stores can. It's, it's a hard thing and it's going to take a community-wide effort to look at, you know, what, what large chain can we get to take and build a downscaled store maybe that would fit into that community, give the services needed as far as the types of food, the amount of food needed, and at a cost that's reasonable that isn't you know, depleting it. And that's another thing where we need to look at maybe the taxes on food and the taxes on, you know, the essentials there that be taken away on, on some of those things so and still be and still be able to maintain what we have. Another question like how do they plan to not only prioritize in here but amplify the voices of the community to actually know what that community wants. It takes somebody that is really at, at ground level being in a group and forming a group that has the ground level people that see what's going on, know what's going on, and get strength. With the Chamber and Go Topeka and organizations that are trying to revitalize downtown, there's lots of money and structure involved and a lot of people that are more than willing to contribute. But when it comes to contributing to some of the other neighborhoods that are economically depressed, uh, you know, the, with structural deficiencies, even a lot of the uh, you know, the properties are, like I say, are on a rental basis and things like that. We maybe need to look at what we have as far as, you know, the, the rental laws and, and, and the, who the leasers and the renters are that are, you know, helping to contribute to some of the, the problems of deterioration. It may take somebody who is civic-minded that is a philanthropist and, and is willing to spend money and time and create organizations and group that can put together neighborhoods that become vital and strong again and feel confident enough that their voice is heard, that their needs are being met, and they're not, they're not just being, you know, uh, heard but not reacted upon. That's the problem. What are your goals um, uh, to help further uh, student life here at Washburn? Um, what are your goals to help improve the university? That's another thing as a mayor, you really don't have control over what the university wants there and the needs of the university. The city contributes a lot of uh, money and infrastructure surrounding the school and can contribute there as far as making it good. The out, you know, the, the property offside the camp, you know, off the grounds of the campus and everything else are owned by private individuals. It's just, it's just that the make a commitment as a city is going to take and promote the university as best it can, but we can't go and promise the university a whole lot more to say that, well, we'll condemn properties to give you more land to expand or things like that. It's not anything that, you know, can be done in any type of immediate thing, and it's hopefully not needed that the university is reaching its full capacity and, and will try to maintain the best services possible to all the students in the community, you know, with the current lands that they own and 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 the buildings and structures they're maintaining and and the base there so it's you know the university is a city university as such because it's known for being in Topeka and, and it's one that we need to promote and 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 do that so but we can't take and make a commitment to them to say that we're gonna you know give this funding or give that funding to them to you know do things that come up it's, it's just taking agreements and, and working through things. Yeah. My name is John Lauer, running for mayor, city of Topeka.